Mr. Speaker, I rise today to express frustration, frustration that I share with millions of Americans around this country. Every day, these millions of patients suffer from debilitating diseases and conditions. For many, embryonic stem cell research is the most promising source of potential cures and treatments. Unfortunately, because of the stubbornness of one man, President Bush, these people continue to suffer as they wait. Since the discovery of embryonic stem cells in 1998, the vast majority of biomedical researchers in this country identify embryonic stem cell research as the most promising source of treatments for diseases like diabetes, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, and spinal cord injury. With the unique ability to become any cell in the body, embryonic stem cells truly are the key to taking science to a whole new level. Unfortunately, President Bush has stubbornly refused to pay attention to these scientists and the patients who might be helped by this research. In August 2001, the President announced that he would prohibit the National Institutes of Health from funding research on embryonic stem cell lines created after August 2001. The assertions to the contrary, there are less than 20 stem cell lines in existence, and most of these researchers are finding less and less workable. Despite the President's opposition to the research, Congress has acted over and over again for this funding. In 2006, we passed the first bill. This year, at, as H.R. 3, we passed the second bill. And all of the bills, including S-5, have the same provisions. Embryos used to derive stem cells, which were created for fertility treatments and are in excess of clinical need, the individuals for her, whom those embryos were created have determined the embryos are not needed and voluntarily donate them, and the, the individuals provide written consent. Let me remind my colleagues that under current law, there are no ethical guidelines like these that govern any stem research that is today. Unfortunately, the President vetoed the bill, but in the 2006 elections, embryonic stem cell research became a critical issue, and it passed this House again in January with an overwhelming majority. It's time to pass this bill again now with the Senate language and send a clear message to the President and this country, the majority of Americans want stem cell research. While the NIH remains limited to a few number of stem cell lines, the rest of the world has eagerly filled the void. California has recently authorized several billion dollars to conduct embryonic stem cell research. Japan, the UK, Singapore, and others have allocated billions of dollars. But the NIH lags behind. Not only is it not participating in this research, it's lost its cutting edge. Edge. Since I first began working on this issue, public support for embryonic stem cell research has soared. According to a Gallup poll re released just this week, since May of 2002, it has gone up to 64 percent, steadily increasing. Mr. Speaker, the Senate gets it, the public gets it, the House gets it. Why doesn't the President of the United States get it? Opponents of this research say that there are other types of cell research that are being dis uh, explored. And in fact, yesterday, shockingly, another new advance, which seems to happen every time we bring this bill up. We welcome these advances, as we welcome all advances in ethical life-saving research. However, this new scientific research should not be used as an excuse to say that it's a substitute for embryonic stem cell research. One of the lead researchers, Kevin Egan, said, all of us agree strongly with how embryonic stem cell research, these experiments are not motivated by a desire to find an end run around these issues. And this week, in fact, on the other end, embryonic stem cell research has led to huge new advances in curing macular degeneration in England. They believe that embryonic stem cell research will lead to a cure in humans within five years. It's promising research. It's supported by a majority of Americans, by the House, by the Senate. 
Mr. Speaker, that's why we're here today, the chance for so many to live a life that others take for granted. Vote for S-5 to restore hope. I reserve the balance of my time. General Lady reserves her time. Gentleman from